today, Satan. Not today, Nick. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. Questions. Where's my cocktail? Where? That's my opinion. All right. You ruined it. You ruined it. You did. Uh, what the f is this? The lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. <laughs> you are the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. Hello everyone and before we start it is time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Rose Forever. They did this amazing bouquet of flowers with special oils that will make the roses last up to a year. This is the perfect gift for you, your mom, your wife, your husband, whatever you want to say, I'm sorry, I love you, I miss you, say it with these beautiful flowers. So if you want to get your bouquet right now, go to the link on the description below and use my discount code ANDY25 and you will get $25 off your order. Again, this is the perfect gift for anyone. So whatever you want to say, say it with roses from Rose Forever. Hello, Beret Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beret Hills, and welcome to another piece of tea of the day, girl. It is time to talk about the last episode of The Real Houses of New Jersey. This is going to be kind of like a little recap uh, from everything that went down. I don't think it was like an explosive enough episode to like do a full recap like a 30 40 minute video so it was like you know what let's just talk about like the little things that happen here and there that um kind of like really makes you wonder what some of these girls are doing am i right so let's talk about this mess because i feel that okay i think we should go I just don't want to go a scene through a scene. I just want to go to like, like you know, the the really important like parts. I feel that I mean, look, everyone is trying to protect Margaret so much, you know, and I feel that this uh, Jennifer Fessler and and Rachel Fuda and Melissa Gorga and Jackie Goldschneider, you know, they are so like up Margaret's ass. It's kind of like impressive. And the point is that Margaret knows how to manipulate people, you know, and she has everything right there eating from her hand. And I think especially Rachel and Danielle, Danielle is not up Margaret's ass because I think she's, she from the beginning kind of like understand who she is and i don't think it's because Teresa or jennifer aiding told her anything i think it's because if you really have your eyes open you will understand who margaret really is you know and if you already have seen her in action fighting you know what she's capable of doing right um, but all of these other ladies are like oh margaret margaret this margaret is so amazing margaret that Girl, you have seen Margaret use or and dig up dirt on every woman before to use it against them. You have seen it happening. How are you going to come here and tell me, oh, no, she, she's perfect. Like, she never does that kind of things. Oh, my God, Teresa and Jennifer are so jealous. Like, how are you going to tell me that when you, we have seen what happened before? You know, what she did to Jennifer Aiding. Honestly, to me, it's one of those really disgusting Lisa Rena kind of moves, you know, because exposing something that it is not up to her to discuss, I feel like that that that, that was like really deep. Um, we all have heard the rumors that Margaret is actually the one behind Jackie Goldschneider the rumor, Melissa Gorga rumor, and that she's just playing cards because she's always trying to, you know, create some kind of scene where she can attach and then she can blame Teresa because the constant fight of Margaret is taking down Teresa, you know? She wants to be the queen bee of the show and she she's always trying to, you know, go after Teresa because... She doesn't understand why people love Teresa the way they do, right? And she got these little, you know, pieces, mouthpieces here that she can't control. It is so weird to me because I will say, like, like any woman should be strong enough to stand up to Margaret, 
right? But Melissa and Jackie are so afraid of her. And it's like, oh my God, no, I mean, let's not do anything about her. I mean, she could be, you don't want to have her as an enemy. You know, you don't have to do this. And it shows so much. Um, Jennifer Fessler, I, I, I cannot connect with her because she is kind of like that blind loyalty friend, you know? I wonder if she has seen the show before or that she, everything that she knows is because Margaret told her how things are, you know? And I think in these cases, usually if you don't have a show, you can run with that because you, you choose to believe your friend. But when you have visual proofs out there, I think it will be worth it to watch it, you know? I think it will be worth it to just like, Hey, look what she literally did last season. Um, for example, when we're going to talk about, about Jennifer Aiding, like everything that is going down with Olivia and the clear, you know, um, the clear, um, how you say, vision that, that she's going through something, that she's deeply affected by finding out that her dad had an affair. It doesn't matter that it was 10 years ago. It's still going to be hard on her, right? And, and now she has to go through life thinking that, you know, their parents' marriage could end up at any moment. And the stress that is putting on the family, that is putting on Bill, that is putting on Jennifer, that is putting on the other kids, you know, it, and all of that came down from Margaret Joseph's. Because, look, maybe you can agree or not with the fact that Jennifer decided to not to forgive and forget. That's, I mean, but at the end of the day, that, that's her choice. And she was right. Look at what he did to her family. Look how much Olivia is suffering to the point that they cannot even bicker, bicker without her going out and screaming like, remember that you love each other. You know what I mean? When, you know, there are certain things in, in relationships that are just normal. So I, it, it really like, it really cement my position on, you know, I cannot believe that Margaret did that just as a retaliation. Like at one point, I, I'm, I'm always saying like, if you want to, if you want to come at someone, come for, you know, the person, you know, like if she had a problem with Jennifer, you can drag her for whatever you think is wrong with her, her looks, her talk, her drinking, her whatever you, that those things are, I mean, it's not okay, but like, you know, do it that way. But why how you have to do or go so low to do something that is going to involve a whole family? You know what I mean? And the worst part is that Margaret doesn't even feel sorry about it. In her mind, it's like, well, I, I wasn't the one who cheated. You know, it's Bill's fault. And yes, it is Bill's fault to, that he was the one who cheated. But if this family already move on from that, why bring it back? Why create this whole situation? I don't know. It, I mean, to me, it's, I feel like Margaret is such a big snake constantly. Um, and I feel that the new ones, Rachel and Danielle, they are definitely going to be in for a big surprise when their turn is up, you know? I feel that at least Danielle, it's kind of like, you know, understanding and she kind of like seeing through the bullshit and she's not, you know, really going down too much into this friendship with Margaret because she, I mean, Danielle has an attitude in itself, you know, in herself, you know? So like she, she knows that she, she can handle this bitch basically, right? Uh, but Rachel, she's so blind by Melissa's words. And, you know, she's like, I can do my own opinion, you know, like I can do this. But the way she acts is already very like, yeah, Margaret, you are such a great person in the world. Let's wait till it's your turn because believe me, it will be your turn. These rumors this season about Melissa Gorga are coming from Margaret. That's a fact, you know. So just wait, just wait till you are the one, to, just wait that, uh, till the time that there is no storyline. So she's going to find something about you and she's going to bring it here for, for the world to enjoy, you know, because that's how Margaret thinks. Um, 
Teresa, she is doing a, a great job. You know, she's going to therapy. She's trying to, you know, become a better person. And I really, really appreciate seeing this journey from her because a lot of people, you know, thought for a while that she was going to be very manipulated by Louis Ruelas, you know, and that Louis was this horrible person. And I think it's she is by she by she showing her work, it's really showing us that we were wrong, you know? And yes, she is changing because of Louis, but she is changing for the best, you know? And now she has to deal, I mean, look at the reactions from Melissa Gorga and Joe Gorga. You can, t you can see how uncomfortable they are with this new Teresa. They will prefer to keep having the Teresa that they can manipulate, that they can use, you know, but because they don't have it anymore, now they are very like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what do we do now? What do we do now? It, it, it shows so much. It's, it's kind of cringy. Watching Joe Gorga at the game, constantly pushing Joy like away from, from, from Teresa, um, from Gia, from the girls, I was like, why are you doing this? Didn't, didn't they kind of like promise each other that they wouldn't involve the kids in this whole situation? You don't see Teresa like, you know, telling the girls, do not talk to Joy. Do, don't do. She's actually always constantly encouraged like, hey, like my relationship with Joy is my relationship. You do, you keep your relationship with your cousins. You keep your relationship with your uncle if that's what you want, you know. But I feel that, you know, Joy and, 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 and Melissa, they don't do that. And it's, it's, it's very weird because uh, there was a scene, I think it was on the last episode of Melissa talking to Antonia. And it's, it looks so fake. It looks so for the cameras, you know? It looks so like, yes, if you want to have a relationship with Gia, I mean, do it. Like with the girl, we are not going to say absolutely anything. But at the same time, I'm feeling that they're the kind of people that if... Like when Antonia said, like, you know what, you know, like, I don't want to be close to them because, you know, they're not close to you. There will be like, OK, baby girl. Yes. I mean, you are a good girl. You are a good daughter. You know, kind of like like gaslighting or manipulating the, the F out of them. I don't know. It's very weird. Like the whole relationship with it's It's very weird. And I just I just hope that, you know, something is going to come out, out of this eventually. I don't think there's going to be resolved right now. I think the reunion is going to be a shit show. Um, but yeah, let's wait and see. Um, what else happened? I mean, this whole situation between Dolores and Frank. Girl, I'm sorry, but I'm team Frank. <laughs> you know, I will always be team Frank. I don't understand why this poly guy is so insecure. Insecure of what? Like, if you see Dolores and Frank together, it's like watching two best friends, you know? Like, there is zero sexual tension because we have never seen any sexual tension. They joke around, you know, they both bust each other balls, you know? Like, they are that kind of friends. And I'm like, why would be he be insecure? At the end of the day, this was not just a little ex-boyfriend. This was literally the ex-husband who is the father of her kids. So, girl, this guy, Frank, will always be in Dolores' lives until the end of her days. Okay, so what? And if they're already friends, why are you being so insecure? Like, honestly, it really doesn't register why he will do something like this and why. Like, I get that Dolores wants to have her happy ending, but and, and, and she deserves it, she deserves 100% happy ending. But on, if it was me, I couldn't have a happy ending with a guy who is not going to be okay with the relationship with my friends. And I'm sorry if my ex-husband is now one of my best friends. It's just the way it is. And again, he is the father of the kids. So what, what are you going to do, right? And you are filming a show together. So <laughs> it's kind of like, just like get over it, get over it. And uh, yeah, I think I think Dolores should also kind of like, be more upfront with with Polly and be like, hey, Frank is going to be here. Either you like it or you leave. Period. Dot. Oh, what else happened? And I think that's it in a nutshell, right? So, see, like nothing was really like that explosive. Um, oh, the the part actually the the um, 
the therapy session with uh, Jennifer Aiding and Bill Aiding, it really kind of like, you know, got me wonder that Jennifer is really getting fed up. You know, she's really getting to a point where she's like, I don't know if I can do this anymore, you know, because Bill, and this is hard because I do like Bill, but like, I think like as, as, as a husband, he is making all of these mistakes. And I may, maybe I think he doesn't have the right tools to deal with this affair and the public eye and the kids, you know. And I think he needs to understand that the life that he thought that he was going to have is not anymore related to the family. Now they are on the public eye. Now, you know, they are <clears throat> in front, like on a reality show. And it is what it is, period. So I think he had that image that he, you know, very... Um, maybe old school, maybe from wherever they are from, you know, uh, that he was going to be the man of the household, you know, and that he was going to go out there and work and just provide all this richness for her, her, her woman and the kids, you know, and that was going to be it. But now she's really facing that. It's not that like that anymore. Like, you know, like now you are not in another country. You are here and now you have to deal with this. Now you are in the public eye. Now you have to like really look deep and, and deal with those feelings and those emotions, right? So, um, yeah, he definitely needs to be doing better. And I hope he does because I do like the marriage between the two of them. And I think they could go very far if they are able to go through this uh, rough patch you know but they have to like sit down have a talk with the family he needs to open up a little bit more have a little bit more of conversation not being so quiet you know in this case and 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 find some kind of resolution but like the way jennifer was talking i was like damn she's done you know she's almost done i mean she is very close to be like i don't want this shit anymore you know and um I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it looks like she's only in this marriage because of the five kids. So I don't know. Let's see what is going to happen. So anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. And if you want to get all the tea related to the Real Housewives of New Jersey or any other Bravo show, make sure to subscribe, 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 uh, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye.